Move over ETM, there is a new motor on the block. A lot of people talking about this thing, so naturally I gotta see what's what. This is the GTS 11 motor from Socian. Specifically, this is the GTS 11C, which is a direct fit for the Mototech 48 volt swing arm. And yes, direct fit in quotations is very necessary. You'll see why later on. But let's back up a bit. The stock 48 volt motor is rated at 1800 watts and 4300 RPM, which I presume is peak. And yes, you can hook up a controller and a battery to that stock motor and push it to 2000 plus watts. But let's be honest, you're putting a lot of stress on that little guy. The ETM that I have here, this is the 1.0, but the 2.0 that you would be able to buy today is rated for 8,000 watts and 9,000 RPM peak. But the Socian here boasts 10 kilowatts, that's 10,000 watts and 10,000 RPM peak. To put it bluntly, this is gonna make me faster. Now normally I'd say let's throw this thing onto the swing arm and see how it goes, but in this case, not so easy. So we got the swing arm in the clamp here and this is my issue. This little bar right here, you see how the swing arm is going straight this way? Well, this one kinks in just a little bit. And if we take this brand new motor, and put it where it's supposed to go. Doesn't quite make it all the way up there to that bolt hole because this is in the way. See this, this is almost all the way up to the swing arm with very little clearance. So this bar needs to be at the very least removed or in line with the swing arm. And I guess I could just whack this thing off and then it would be able to fit fine, but this is actually a very important structural piece. So the bottom rear shock mounts right up here. So all of that force, whenever you jump this thing or even just sit down on it, all the force is being pushed into this bar. And with one of its four legs missing, this thing could twist or worse, just break. Which means if I cut this thing off, I need to get it re-welded together so that we have that support system there. Unfortunately, I am not a welder. I don't know how to do that. So I'm gonna first try Try a couple other things. Maybe I can give it a few wax in the corner right here, maybe add some heat so we can see if we can at least bend this thing enough out of the way so that it clears. Otherwise, I'll have to try something else. Would help if this was a little more secure. Well, that didn't do exactly what I wanted to, so time to take some more drastic measures. Well, a lot of test fits, a lot of shaving, a lot of filing, and a lot of drilling, but we have it in the frame. So while I was able to keep this leg, it is definitely not really that structural. I basically had to chop the thing in half, and it is hollow tubing, so this thing is not really gonna hold up, but this is temporary. Trust me, I will get this properly welded. In fact, if you are a welder in San Diego area, hit me up. But we got the clearance we needed and just barely. You can see right there how close it is to the actual swing arm. That's how much clearance you're working with. And really the tightest spot right there is the very last plug for the hall sensors. It's a little bent, but I don't think it's gonna be too big of a deal. Also, while this uses the same bolt holes as the original motor, this doesn't quite line up there either. I actually had to take a drill bit, go up one size to make these holes a little longer so that they would be able to clear properly. Otherwise, it was rubbing right up against it such that I could probably get one or two of the three bolts in there, but there was a risk of cross-threading things if it wasn't going in straight. So far, I'd say not exactly bolt-on, some hackery required. You know what else I'm noticing with this motor? The threads for these bolts are helicoiled. Really pulling out all the stops to make this a direct fit, huh? But before we start building back up, we gotta keep tearing down. We gotta pull out the rest of this ETM kit, including the controller, because we want something that's more customizable. So I'm gonna be using my far driver in this case. All right, now we got this thing fully gutted, but now it's time to do a little bit of wiring because like I said, I need to use the far driver in this case and these plugins are for the ETM kit. So we need to make sure that these match. So on this bike, we have the ETM throttle and the voltmeter, but right here, I have my far driver wiring harness, which is set up a little bit differently. This has six wires, which goes not only to the throttle, but the three speed sensor. This harness, on the other hand, has the throttle and the speed sensor in two separate parts. And they're both female ends, so I need to actually turn these into male ends and also find out which of these wires go to what on this because this has different colors. All right, had a lot of fun with a lot of connectors, stripping, cutting, and reconnecting everything, but we got it. So now, as you can see, I have the far driver wiring harness connected at least to the bar controls. So we have the six pin that connects to the Electro & Co throttle and the three speed. We have these two wires, which is actually in a three pin that goes to the voltmeter. And we have another two pin that goes to the key, which I have in the middle now because I bent it previously when it was on the side here when there's no shrouds, there's nothing really protecting that. So 
I put it up here. And finally, I did a little bit of hacking to the wiring harness from the Hall connector in the Sotion motor. This is the plug that it comes with, and I'm sure this works with a lot of other components, a lot of other controller wiring harnesses, but not mine. So I put one on that would fit. And also note that this one has six wires coming out of it instead of five. It's that white wire that you see in addition to the other ones that you don't see in the Electro & Co motor and the 48 volt stock motor because this one has a temperature sensor. Thankfully though, the far driver wiring harness actually Actually has that and I had this thing tucked away for a rainy day and so I've actually put a connection on it and added that to this section right here. So we're gonna be able to monitor temperatures now. Well, we got everything finally together, sort of. I mean, this thing is really tight. There are so many wires and it's so long, I guess for universal purpose, that this thing is really compact. It's gonna be really hard to put the side panels actually onto this thing. But now that we have it all connected, I actually made a few tweaks into the Far Driver app to make sure that it's compatible. I did the auto learn and now we can see that it actually works. Whoa and that it's quite powerful. Sounds kind of cool too. This is gonna be fun. Let's see what this thing's all about. All right, all right. Okay, not a bad start. See how it feels at slow speeds just real quick? This feels pretty good. And actually you can physically hear the motor at the low throttle, which Kind of helps actually a little bit. You can kind of gauge it better rather than just feel. You can also hear it. It does have a little bit of a delay in the throttle, but I think that can be tuned out with the Far Driver app. And I haven't changed the tune from when it was in the 60 volt, so this is set up with the 60 volt in mind. Besides the voltage, of course, that's all I changed. But we can see what the full power does to it. Well, max speed of 39. I know 39 miles an hour doesn't sound like a lot here, but. Keep in mind, again, this is tuned for the 60 volt in mind, so I think I'm only pulling like 50 amps. In fact, I'm gonna go in and make that change because this is capable of so much more. Because now we're not limited by the motor's capability, we're actually limited, in this case, by the controller because that only goes up to 100 amps. So screw it, let's just go all the way up. 100 line current and 300 phase. We got a slight uphill ahead of us, so let's just, uh, let's go for it. Whoa! Holy shit! Oh, that is dangerous. You actually like have to hold on now. Oh my god! Woo! Slow down. Need that big brake kit on this guy too. That's a necessity now. At least it's set up so that it still will do the slow stuff. I mean, look at this. It still can do just creepy crawling around. Little figure eights, like it's nothing. But then when you want it, you can go for it! Whoa! There we go. 50 miles an hour, like nothing. And this is on a short stretch, too. I'm sure we could get up into the 50s with a little more tuning and with some more distance. You know, you also gotta wonder to yourself how much the tires have an effect, because this is the bike with the knobbies. So if this had the Supermoto set up, how would it perform then? I think we're gonna have to find out. Whoa! You gotta be ready! This bike now has some serious get up and go, like scary get up and go to the point where I need to start upgrading some other things on here, like brakes, for example, so that I'm able to stop as effectively as I am at going. But it's not just the practical stuff. We'll also need to upgrade more electronic components if we want even more power out of it. See, when it comes to bikes like this, there are three main components that all have three different types of capabilities. And when you're looking for additional power, you have to take into account which one of those is the weakest link and that's gonna be your limiting factor. Those three being the battery, the controller, and the motor. The battery limits you with how much draw it can have and how much capacity it holds. The controller then has its limitations on how much it can draw through it. And then finally, the motor has its capability of how much it can actually produce. So when a bike like this is completely stock, it's limited by basically every single component. I think the limiting factor in that case is really the controller, which is about 35 or 38 amps. But then I put in the ETM kit, and that replaces not only the controller, but also 
the motor. And you could get a better battery as well, but again, the limiting factor there is the controller, which is set to be about 75 amps. And now again, as it sits currently, we're again limited by the controller because currently in here is a FAR driver ND72300. That one only has 100 line amps and 300 phase amps. But we know from the stats of the motor and the battery that both of those are capable of 130 plus. That means if we want even more power out of this to get even deeper into the 50s, maybe even 60 miles an hour, we need to change out that controller. I think you can see where this is going. This is going to turn into a couple episodes actually to see exactly how much power and how much speed we can get out of this bike. So naturally the next step in this process is getting a new controller. Now normally I would think about getting one step up in the far driver line and getting an ND72450. However, I've been talking to some other companies that have provided me something similar for just that. So subscribe and stay tuned.